Stick around a while, CC. It all depends, bud. There's a lot of stuff here, you know. As buddy. Pastor showers. Thanks for the donut. Amen. <laughs> here, you be you, and I'll be darling. There we go. How's that? A little better now? I'm dead and in heaven. You've just been working too hard. Hello, Brownsburg High School. Thanks for watching BHS TV. Today is Monday, April 25th. I'm Aaron Bashir. And I'm Robbie Harris, and here are today's announcements. Prom tickets are now on sale for $35 and will be sold during all lunches from now until next Friday, May 6th. Prom will take place on Saturday, May 7th from 8 to 11 at the Indiana Roof Ballroom downtown. The theme is Escape to Rio. All students must have a ticket and will be breathalyzed upon entry. Any student interested in joining BHS Chainlink Senate next year, please click up an application in your team office ASAP. For any questions regarding the process, feel free to see Mr. Cochran in room H105 or Mr. Betts in the Senior Academy 201. Applications are due on Monday, May 2nd. Seniors, if you're looking for a part-time or full-time job, please take a moment and check out all the job opportunities posted on the bulletin board on the first floor of the Senior Academy. If you have any questions about any jobs, please contact Mrs. Martin. The Hendricks College Network and Plainfield High School are sponsoring this year's Community Career Fair. The fair will be open to the community free of charge from 3 to 4 p.m. and 5 to 7 p.m. on Wednesday, April 27th in the Plainfield High School Fieldhouse. There will be over 50 local businesses who will be participating. There will be a call-out meeting next Thursday, May 5th, for anyone interested in high school guard next school year. The meeting is at 6.30 p.m. and will be in the BHS band room. Please enter door number 16. On Friday, April 22nd, the French Club enjoyed dinner and dessert at Petit Chou in Broad Ripple. All members agreed that the meal was delicious. Here are some photos from that event. International Club will be hosting an interfaith event on Thursday, May 5th, in the Senior Academy LGI from 3 to 5 p.m. Please note that this is a change from the original date. The event will consist of speakers from several religions, keynote speakers, and a Q&A session. The International Club would like to give students and community members a chance to learn about different faiths and cultures, and anyone is welcome. Since tomorrow is National Pretzel Day, we went around the school and asked students and staff about their opinion of pretzels. Doughy, salty, crunchy. Is your mouth watering yet? This is how many people would describe one of the oldest living snacks, the pretzel. The pretzel has stuck around since the year 610, made by a monk in Italy. He originally called them priatolas, or little rewards. They were for children who had memorized their prayers. As there is no actual evidence of this story being true, the earliest recorded evidence of the pretzel appearing in history is in the crest of the German Baker's Guild in the year 1111. As the pretzels lived on, they have long been involved in the Christian faith. By the 16th century, they had become tradition to eat them on Good Friday in Germany. Catholics once considered them the official food of Lent. Pretzels really took a big hit in 1861 when Julius Sturgis created the first commercial pretzel bakery in Littes, Pennsylvania. Today, pretzels are most popular in American Germany, and because of this, in 2003, Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell declared April 26th as National Pretzel Day. But how do you celebrate such a wonderful holiday? Should you rob your local pretzel store, or maybe twist your best friend's legs and do it look like a pretzel? As those are both very bad ideas, there are better ways. You can celebrate by chilling in the sun and getting your tan on while you devour that bag of pretzels sitting by your side. Soft or hard, twisted or straight, maybe in a knot, it is no doubt that this snack will always be a classic snack for everyone around the globe. So stop by your local pretzel store Tuesday, and if you're lucky, they will be giving free pretzels out. Some pretzels sound really good right now, actually. Um, now it's time for sports. Hey, Tommy. Thanks, guys. The varsity softball team had a great day at the Carmel Invitational last Saturday. In their first game, the Dogs jumped out to an early 5-0 lead on Fort Wayne Carroll and went on to win 11-2. Dogs racked up 12 hits in the game, and Alyssa Brown and Kaylee Pate's pitching efforts only allowed Carroll four hits. In their second game, the Dogs took on sixth-ranked Castle. After four innings, the score was tied at 3-3 and remained tied through the regulation seven innings forcing extra innings to be played. The Knights were able to push one runner across home in the top of the eighth to give them a 4-3 lead. In the bottom of the eighth, Alyssa Brown tied the game with an RBI double to right field. A little later, Taylor Stell smashed a line drive up the middle for an RBI and gave the Dogs a 5-4 victory. Sidney Lowe pitched a great game, allowing only one earned run in eight innings. The ladies are back in action at home tomorrow against Westfield. 
The varsity boys golf team resumed acting Saturday in Terre Haute at the Bob Barnett Golf Invitational. The dogs hung tough with the fast greens all day, but came up two strokes short of the championship, finishing second out of 17 teams and closing with a team score of 318. Host Terre Haute South grabbed the trophy with a score of 316. Luke Kelly led the way with a 75, Andrew Edwards added a 79, while Landon Mundell came in with an 81. Dogs will host Avon and Lebanon Thursday at West Chase Golf Club. The varsity girls tennis team was also in action last Saturday against four ranked teams at the Park Tudor Invitational. The team came home with second place overall and had some outstanding individual performances. Kara Maringer brought home second place at number one singles. Morgan Bettner also took second place at number two singles. Haley Blood at number three singles and the doubles team of Caitlin Prada, Peyton Haygood, Christina Petrovic, Lily House, all brought home third place finishes. Ladies are back in action tomorrow night at Noblesville. Good luck. The varsity baseball team played a doubleheader against Fishers on Saturday. Excellent pitching and defense was showcased in both games by both teams, but the dogs came up on the losing end. In the first game, Garrett Copley threw four and one-third innings and allowed only three hits and two earned runs. Jarrett Starnes finished the game not allowing any runs. In the second game, Starnes and Tyler Byerly overcame a rough start and allowed only one run in the last four innings. Dogs had runners in scoring position five times but could not get a timely hit to fall. Dogs will take on Westfield tonight. That's all for today, guys. I'm Tommy Smith. Back over to you. Thanks, Thomas. That's all we've got for you today, BHS. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We will see you on Wednesday.